Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to check out the emulation performance of this new mini gaming PC that I recently picked up from AliExpress. Now, in the past I've bought a few mini PCs, you know, specifically designed for gaming from that website, but this one definitely takes the cake. Here we have a desktop Intel CPU and a low-profile MSI GTX 1650 desktop-style graphics card inside of this super small form factor case here. Now you can get these in several different variants from the i3 up to the i9, but basically you're either going to be stuck with a 1050 or a 1650 GPU. I just posted my review video on this PC. In that one we just ran some benchmarks on Windows 10 and tested out some games. It performs really, really well for what it is, but since then I've had a lot of people ask about emulation. So that's what this video is specifically geared towards. We're going to test out some Sega Saturn, PSP, GameCube, Wii, Wii U. We'll go with some Switch, some Xbox, some 360, PS2, PS3. We're going to try to cover it all here. But before we jump right into it, just want to give you a quick rundown on the specs. For the CPU, we have the i5-9400F, 6 cores, base clock of 2.9 GHz with the turbo up to 4.1. We have that low profile MSI GTX 1650 and this does have 4 gigs of GDDR5 VRAM, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 2667, a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD, and I'm running Windows 10 Pro on this thing. So with all that out of the way, let's jump right into some testing. We're going to start off on the low end and then work our way up. So first up, we have some Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. I'm upscaled to 2560 by 1920, and I'm pretty sure we could go a bit higher, but I only have a 1080p monitor, so we're already over that. It runs amazingly on this little machine, and going into this, I expected it would. If you want to do anything lower than this, N64, SNES, Neo Geo, FBA, you want to do some CPS 1, 2, 3, Naomi, and even a Thomas Wave, this little PC will handle it just fine. Next on the list, moving up to Sega Saturn, I'm using RetroArch with the Beetle Core. I personally prefer using the Beetle Core, it's just more accurate, but if you want to use Yobase and Shiro, it'll work just as well. PSP is another one that this machine's going to handle just fine. We're using the standalone version of PPSSPP, Vulcan Backend, Chains of Olympus, upscaled to 5x. We don't have any frame skip on, no hacks or anything like that, it just runs it perfectly. Moving over to some original Xbox, I'm using the standalone version of CXBX Reloaded. This is an original Xbox emulator. It's been updated in the past few months and I've been getting really good performance out of machines like this. We are at 1080p and as long as the game is supported by the emulator you shouldn't have any issues running it. But keep in mind CXBX Reloaded uh, still is a work in progress. So there are games that just won't even boot on this and there are games that aren't really compatible. No matter how much power you have, the system just won't run it. But if it's on their compatibility list, this mini PC will do it. Here's Jet Set Radio Future, and I did have to mute the sound because there's no way to turn the music off inside of the game. Uh, but it does work, and it works really well, as you can see here. Dolphin, the GameCube and Wii emulator, is just one of those emulators that's come a long way in the last few years. We get amazing performance on lower end systems than we're using here, and going into this, I didn't expect any issues with GameCube or Wii. And there's even a lot of games that'll be able to do 4K with this setup here. When it comes to the GTX 1650 and the Dolphin emulator, you can use the DX11 backend, OpenGL, or Vulkan. I just left it on Vulkan because it was working great. Taking it up a notch to PS2 using PC SX2, OpenGL back in, 1440p, and with a game like this you can actually go up to 4K but you need to use the DirectX 11 back in. Personally, I like to stick with OpenGL when I have a powerful enough system, and at 1440p you're going to have a great experience with the PS2 emulator. I've got one more to test here with PS2, it's kind of a harder one to emulate, and that's Gran Turismo 4, one of my favorite racing games. And just like we saw with Ratchet and Clank, we're having no issues at all. We're at a constant 60 here, 1440p, and it's just working amazingly.
Here we have 3DS using the Citra emulator, OpenGL backend, 3x resolution. When it comes to this emulator and a PC like this, some of these games won't run at 3x at full speed. You'll have to drop them down to 2, and it really comes down to the emulator itself. Hopefully, in the future, we can get some DirectX 11 support or even Vulkan, but right now, we're stuck with OpenGL. Xbox 360 using Xenia has come a very long way in the last few months. They've done some amazing updates here. This is Forza 2 running at full speed. And another one I always like to test with this emulator is Red Dead. But unfortunately, on this system, at least with the latest update of Xenia, it kept crashing at the title screen. I tried a couple different fixes, but I just couldn't get into gameplay. emulator I tested on this little piece and the final emulator I tested on this PC was RPCS3, the PS3 emulator. Vulcan back in, upscaled to 1080p, first up Tekken 6, it's an easier one to run. And if we take a look at that GPU utilization up in Afterburner, we're around 45 to 60 percent. It does jump around a little bit, but when it comes to different PS3 games they do utilize the CPU in much different ways, like Skate 3 totally maxed out all six cores here and we don't have any extra threads, I thought that was going to hurt performance, but even at 1080p with that Vulcan back in, we can run Skate 3 at 60 all day long. And these are the highest temperatures that I've seen while either emulation or PC gaming with this little mini PC. We're up to around 78 degrees Celsius and that's really because it has maxed out all six cores trying to run this game. This is an awesome little emulation PC. It's actually an awesome little gaming PC when you consider the form factor. And the price on this really isn't that bad right now given PC part prices and especially GPU prices. Remember, this comes with a dedicated low profile MSI GTX 1650 and I paid $580 for a bare bones kit. I did add the SSD and the RAM. But when it comes down to it, if you're looking to go small form factor for a gaming PC, I think this would be a great option. Like I mentioned, you can get this up to the i9. I chose that i5, and I think it's perfect for everything that I want to do, and it pairs up with this GTX 1650 just fine. So I think it's safe to say that this little PC can basically emulate anything, and if you're interested in checking out the PC game performance of this little PC, I will leave a link to that original video I created. I tested 10 games there, I went more in depth with this PC, and I also ran some benchmarks. So overall, yeah, this is something that I could definitely recommend if you're in the market for a small form factor gaming PC right now. As making this video, it is kind of hard to beat the price on this thing given GPU prices and part availability. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If there's any Anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.